Hi guys, Keith Arkberg Farms. It is a beautiful, crisp, frosty Sunday morning. As you can see around me, how everything out here is most likely dead. Except for hopefully what's underneath there. But hey, that's not what we're doing today. But instead, we got the trailer hooked up and we're gonna go take a journey and go hunt for some farm tracers. So, let me show you. So I'm going to hold this sideways just so it looks better on your screen. Pretty much where I used to find a lot of stuff was through Craigslist. Um, Craigslist has pretty much just disappeared and Facebook Marketplace has really taken over on just about everything. So typically I'll go in here to look for stuff. Uh, one of my most common search terms is either three point, which we'll click on that, or um, tractor. Always click local. I'll get rid of all their stuff. And there's the stuff that pops up. And we've got discs and a blade and another two bottom plow and some pointless advertisements, a rock rake, a digging bucket. Uh, that's another ad. Some tractor, some corn planters. But yeah, here's kind of where you get the idea of where stuff is on the market. Uh, a lot of times I find it best to search during the winter or right after the first killing freeze because people find stuff that has been buried on properties and then that's when they go and uh actually start to advertise stuff here is actually what we're going to go head out and take a look at it that right there a little six foot wide scallop disc single gang Well, we got it loaded up. Uh, that fella really didn't want to talk on camera, so we went ahead and loaded it up. Um, get back to the house and kind of show you what we got. A lot bigger than I thought it was. Um, it's got full 16, almost 18 inch discs on it, full six foot wide, good scallops on it. About 400 pounds. Thankfully, had a tractor to load it. So, yeah, we're going to head back and get this thing unloaded. There we go. Here it is in all of its glory. This thing is much, much bigger than I did anticipate, but I believe it should pull just fine with the 5020 over there. We'll find out here in a second after I get it hooked up. Uh, it's a little chilly out, so I've got to warm things up just a little bit more before I start moving around. Um, all in all, not bad. I do want to talk a little bit about the actual buying process. Now, I purchased this through uh, Facebook Marketplace, so that's a solely texting back and forth type of app where you use an instant messenger. A lot of people don't like doing it, but they know they're really the only way that they can market the stuff they have. What really, really turns people off immediately, because I've sold stuff on here quite a bit, is the first thing people want to do is trade you for stuff. And unless you say you want to trade for stuff, don't offer somebody a trade. Secondly, when they have a price on there, that's a price that they're kind of looking to get for their product. Now, I will say 99% of the time, people actually overprice this stuff because they know somebody's going to come back and say, oh, you want $400 for that? I'll give you $200. And that, honestly, when you go half of it, is an insult to the person. And right away, that turns people off and they don't want to do anything with it. The majority of this small farm stuff like this I've been purchasing stuff on and off for the past oh, about four years now. And this is actually the most expensive actual three point attachment that's not specific, like the plastic mulch layer that I have back over there. But this was 325. 
and that has a lot to do with the inflation. Typically, I don't pay over $250 for any of these little three-point attachments for a small Category 1 tractor. Um, tells Category 1 by the size of the pins. So that's kind of where I try to base everything off of. Typically what I do when I uh, go on the marketplace, first thing I ask them, still available, it automatically populates that, so I just send it out there. Wait for them to send back something. Oh, it is available. Then I just immediately, can you go any lower on it? I don't give them a price. I don't ask, you know, anything else except can you go lower? They shoot me back a number because everybody's always got a higher number and they're always, you know, wanting something in here but not here. And typically I will just say, yes, that's the number I want to pay for it. That, that's, you know, it's really non-negotiable. Unless I show up and I see something like this and then you really don't see the stuff that they didn't show in the photos like, oh, it's got like three broken discs on it or this thing's so rusty and crusty that you can't hook it up or it's missing a pin. I mean, that's the only times really where I'll actually negotiate back once I get on site to talk to somebody. Otherwise, I know what I'm looking for. I know what I'm getting. And that's just pretty much what the deal is. And that's the understanding of what we were doing to begin with. Because at least in my region, if you try to lowball people too much around here, they just shut down. They'll say, okay, see you later. And they're done with you. They don't want to have anything to do with you. So it's all kind of with the respect for one another. We know that they don't want it. They know that we want it, but they also know that we don't want to pay more than it's worth, but they also want to try to get as much as they can out of it. So it's, it's a really intricate dance. Like I said, I really don't try to renegotiate the price after I get there unless I find something like really wrong with the item to where it's going to cost money to actually repair it. So that's a little bit about how I go about, you know, working on, you know, buying and selling small farm equipment. Um, I try not to drive more than about 50 to 100 miles for anything. That's about an hour and a half, well, about an hour, two hour journey, somewhere in there, round trip two to four hours, half a day. Um, I will say I did drive a lot further for the uh, little uh, small tractor uh, plastic layer. And that's because those things are really rare. That comes off of, goes for a BCS. I converted it over to go on the back of a three point tractor. Um, you can check out the video. Um, just Google three point plastic layer, or three point BCS plastic layer and you'll find it. And I drove clear to Oklahoma for that. That was five hour drive down, five hour drive back. And I paid four, four fifty for that actually, but that was a quarter of the price it was actually worth. So that was a darn good deal. But anyways, um, this thing's good and heavy duty. I think it'll work great on the back of the tractor. Go put Grandass tractor away, and then I'll get the uh, fifty twenty up and running. Put the trailer back, do all that fun stuff, and uh, get back and hopefully see how well it works. The ground's starting to thaw a little bit. It's a little gummy out here, so I'll be interested to see. So, as you can see behind me there, all in all, not bad. I mean, when I got into this thicker grass right here, it didn't quite cut as well, but you can see down the field where there's really good dark patches like here and like, oh, it's hard to do, right, there we go, right there. But all in all, not bad. I mean, it is way, way too many to be out here playing right now. Had a bunch of rain and it's been freezing and just barely started to thaw. So, I think that this bad boy here behind me is actually perfect for this tractor. I mean, it does not feel like it's weighting it down too much at the back. It's pulling good. I might have to throw a little bit more weight on it. I might have to build some pins or something to drop some of my weights on there. Just to kind of get a little bit more down pressure on it. But all in all, good deal. Good farm find. So, like I was telling you earlier, look out there. Look in all the places possible. Try and negotiate the cost. Don't overly negotiate the cost unless there's something really wrong with the item you're buying. Otherwise, you know, go out, enjoy them. When you're done with them, sell them. I mean, that's what the great thing about these marketplaces is nowadays. People go out and they buy these stuff for one season and then they get their use out of it and they sell it. So, I mean, in all actuality, they're not trying to make money off it. They're trying to get their use and keep going. Me, on the other hand, I start to accumulate stuff because I've got 
bigger areas to work in and try to build up the small farm. But everybody else, one year and done. Same thing with these little small tractors. Exact same thing. So hope you all liked me saw your day. If you did, don't forget to like and subscribe. Thank y'all. Have a good day. Also, as a reminder, every third Thursday of the month, we do a live Q&A to answer all your questions and talk about what's going on on the farm. That's the third Thursday every month at 5 p.m. Central Time. Also, don't forget to go over to arkenbergfarms.com, scroll down the bottom, digital tools and training. Got a bunch of cool spreadsheets down there. Then finally, we are booking Mother's News Fairs this year. I'm going to be at all four of them. We're going to be doing Texas, Pennsylvania, Wisconsin, and Lawrence, Kansas. While I'm there, I'm going to be setting up some console times to set up an hour to go over whatever you'd like to discuss on your farm. Um, I will be getting ready to start booking those. They'll be on the website as well. So hope to see you all there and uh, help everybody out as much as possible.